just reading this book about how to do a great software demo. It's a fantastic book and apparently uh, the thing you do is the last thing first. Well, I wanted to find out something in this book and I was just looking through it and, and um, I wanted to look up at, you know, something about special situations and of course I used the table of contents which is right here. So how do you create a table of contents when you're using InDesign? That's what this is all about and our table of contents can be interactive. So whether it's going into a PDF, whether it's going into a Swift, whether it's going into an ebook or an EPUB file, then you can use the automatic table of contents and this episode of Creative Suite TV is all about it. I hope you think I do. A great demo of the table of contents feature. Let's get this ball rolling by having a look at the way my document has been set up in InDesign. And I'm, I've created a book, well, it's not using the book function, but I'm working on a book of, of a number of different magazine articles that I've written over the years. It's important to know how this document is set up before you create your table of contents because you rely on certain things in the document being constructed in a certain way. Let's have a look at the pages panel. I'm going to go ahead and bring the pages panel out onto screen where you can see I have a number of pages. It's not an enormous document, but we'll do for this exercise. So within this document, I have three different magazine articles that I've written. This one's about Camera Raw uh, 5. There's a nice photo of me down the bottom. Wow, that looks great. Um, and all set up. Then each of the articles that are in this um, book have got steps within them because they're tutorials. So we have you know, the camera raw workflow, moving on to, you know, different instructions, subheadings, if you will, all the way through um, the document. And as I click down through the document, uh, we get to our second article, which is about creating interactive portfolios. And then under that heading, we have other subheadings and then body copy down here. Now, these have been set up as paragraph styles. Now, if you're not familiar with paragraph styles, make yourself familiar with them because these are the most important things. Now, I'm going to select this article heading and you can see I've entitled this header. It's really important to understand I've created this beforehand. Okay, so the headers are called headers. And then the next level of heading I've, I've called subheads or sub underscore heads. These are important and they need to be applied throughout your document in order to create the table of contents using the table of contents feature in InDesign. I've already gone ahead and applied that to each of the pages. When we go back and step back to page one now, this is our cover page, and then we go to page two, this is where we want to put our table of contents. Okay, this right here. Now, we want the table of contents to appear in a certain style and we can go ahead and create a paragraph style to format the table of contents if we like or we can do it after we've generated and we can get InDesign to automatically create a style for us. Let's do that and I'll show you how to edit it afterwards. So, step one, format your book or your document, whatever it may be. Under the layout menu now, we come down to table of contents. Now there's two options there, table of contents styles and table of contents. If you're repeatedly creating uh, table of contents for different documents, then you would create a style. So you can reuse that style over and over again. We're just doing a one-off, so we're going straight to table of contents in this case. Go ahead and click on that. Now here's what we do. Oh, I've already got those in there, so let, let me remove those. The table of contents um, uh, feature itself will appear kind of just like this, and I'll zoom in nice and gently for you so you can, you can have a good look at it. This is the panel now. The paragraph styles within our document are located over here on the right, and over here on the left is an empty panel. So what we do is we select say the header style 
and we add it in to include it. Now InDesign will search through the document, find any text that's formatted in that paragraph style and include that in the table of contents. Well, that's really great. The other thing we can do now, so that's the, the first level, that's the, the document header. Then we can come down here and say, ah, let's include subheads as well. And you'll notice that steps in. That's what we call a second level entry. If we click on the first one, we have a first level entry. We'll click on the second one, we have a second level entry. So that's really cool. Now, when this is flowed in as text, do we want it to appear as the same style? Well, that's about, you know, kind of 30 point text. Now, you'd never have your table of contents in 30 point text. So we come down here to the entry style and say, no paragraph style, basic paragraph style. We could choose one of our existing ones, but you'll also notice that InDesign throws in automatically a new one for you table of contents body text and you can just go ahead and select it and then you can come back and edit that afterwards if you like to. I'm going to go ahead and choose exactly the same style for each of our first level and second level entries. The other thing that you can choose to do is put a page number after the entry. So InDesign will detect what page those items are on and then put a page number afterwards. Now there's something very important here. If you're creating an ebook, for example, an EPUB file that's going onto a reader device, the page numbers change and that the ebook devices automatically create those page numbers for you. So it would be silly to include a page number because the pages do change within the document. So in the case of an ebook or an EPUB file, I would suggest choose no page number. Okay. If you're doing a printed version, then definitely include the page number. Okay, You can sort them out in alphabetical order if you want to. You can do a number of different things. If you're creating an interactive PDF, please make sure this bottom option is selected, which is Create PDF Bookmarks. That means you will have in the Bookmarks panel of Acrobat, the, or in the Adobe Reader, you will have all of these as hyperlinks. Okay, So definitely include those. So that's very good. We've got all of our content included in there. We can choose different styles if we want for the page numbers. We're not having page numbers in this case. If your panel doesn't look like this, you probably have just got the fewer options or more options button uh, switched on. So just go ahead and click on that. The last thing that you need to do is press OK. That gives you all of your text. You can then simply click and run it onto the page you can see, oh, you see my graphics? They've actually had uh, the header style on them. We don't need those. We can edit that little bit of text out. And then there we have our table of contents all flowed in. And then if we want to edit the style of that, we certainly can by editing the TOC body text. We can choose the font that we like. We can choose the leading that we like. I'm going to go ahead uh, and pump that up a little. Um, there we go. Go ahead and press OK and we now have our table of contents. I'll just expand that out a little bit so we can see the whole lot. Very good. There we have it. <coughs> Excuse me. Now to test it. We'll save our document and in order to test this file what will it work in? So obviously we can print it like that. We can make a PDF and then the PDF is going to be interactive but we can also create a flash file or a Swift file. So I'm going to go ahead and say export. I'm just going to plonk it onto my desktop just for the test and we're going to use an SWF. Okay, I'll save it out onto the desktop. We'll include the interactive page curl as well and we'll view it after we're done. Let's go ahead and press OK. We've got some over, overset text but we won't worry about that at the moment and then that will generate out our, here we go, our book. So we should have an interactive page curl there and then there's our table of contents and if we want to find out say something like, oh I don't know, creating PDF bookmarks, go ahead and click on it and it will take you 
to that page. That is how you create an automatic table of contents. Don't forget to visit www.creativesweettv to see all of my videos online and you can follow me now on Twitter at cs underscore tv. Have a sensational day!